If you fish for bass, chances are you spend much of your time casting and retrieving spinnerbaits and crankbaits. Lures that smash, crash, and bash their way through shallow cover. Cranked on heavy tackle to power your way through snags. I thought I felt him flash in there a couple different times. Boom, boom, that spinnerbait just went doop, 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 doop. In many instances, competitive bass fishing is all about efficiently covering water to locate and trigger aggressive biters. With mainstream bass anglers closely mimicking the pros in their arsenals and approach. Well, much of the time, perhaps, but certainly not in all locations and circumstances. Because in lakes where crystal clear water, minimal cover, and significant fishing and boating pressure conspire to make bass finicky and selective, That's power right. tactics no longer make the cut. Instead, oh, slower methods oh. that emphasize subtlety and finesse rise to the forefront for tempting fussy bass to bite on cue. Okay. Three more of those, Al, we're in the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're in the money, baby. <laughs> This is a dirty job, but somebody's got to do this. <laughs> no. Dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Oh, do you think I can have that jig back? Ah, man. Look at that. Look at that. Nice fish. Ugh. Ted and I are doing what we love to do. Catch big smallmouth like this. We dream about this all winter long. I'm fishing with a longtime friend of mine, Ted Stooner from Winnipeg. And uh, we both fell in love with the area we're in because of these big smallmouth like this, big giant smallmouth. You know, we both live up north. And uh, Ted lives in Winnipeg and I live in northern Minnesota. In the winters, they can get a little long and a little bit tough. And like I said, you spend a lot of time dreaming about an open water smallmouth bite, beautiful sunny days, no wind, catching big brown bass. Uh, and then sometimes you wake up and you look at two foot of snow out there and 35 below zero. And so you got to get out of there a little bit. So after we did some research, and I'm going to ask you this question. Where would you go in December? January, February, and March to get on days like this, nice warm days, sunny days, in open water fishing and catch good numbers of big smallmouth bass? Well, we kind of asked ourselves that question. And after doing a little research, there's only one place on a continent that I know that can be done on. And that's on a lower Colorado River system. To be specific, the two key lakes here, here is Lake Havasu that we're on right now and Mojave, the lake right above it. Two gems for smallmouth, absolute gems. And when, when can you catch these fish? In the middle of winter. No wonder some snowbirds come here. I guess after this show, we're probably gonna send a few from Winnipeg here and I'm gonna send a few more from the upper Midwest, but that's okay, there's a lot of water here to fish. The Colorado River lakes are made up of Lake Powell, Mead, Mojave, Havasu, right on down through Martinez. There's smallmouth throughout the entire Colorado River system, but the majority of big smallies are found in Mojave and Lake Havasu. To say there's a lot of water here to fish is an understatement. Mojave has over 28,000 acres of water, and Havasu has over 25,000 acres of water. On Lake Havasu, they started a habitat restoration program. What does that mean? Well, the local DNR built man-made fish habitat for the rather barren structure in the lake. At the same time, the coaga mussels got into the system and covered the habitat. Needless to say, this was huge for the system. The fish population exploded 
and the water got gin clear. When I mean clear, I mean you can see bottom on Mojave in 40 feet of water at times. Now, because these watersheds are really the only game in town, they see a fair amount of pressure from fishermen and recreational boaters alike. Team that would ultra clear water and you have the making for some skilled fishing opportunities. Finesse fishing teaches even the best anglers new tricks to getting one more bite. Anybody can power fish. You have to have the oh, mental and physical it. prowess to become an efficient oh, finesse know. fisherman. That's a large mouth. It ain't even a small mouth. I thought for sure it'd be a smallie. Oh, a large yeah. mouth. Nice bonus fish. Yeah. Yeah. We'll add him to the pot. <laughs> I was dragging that, that, that hair right along that ledge, and I seen the shadow come out and dunk. Yeah, I thought it was a small mouth. You wouldn't expect it where she'd come to be a largey. You, you know, on, on these lakes here, particularly on uh, a Havasu, and I'm not, I'm, I, well, I know it's true on uh, a mead, but Havasu is about 50% largemouth, 50% smallmouth. Yeah, you know, and fish are really, really nice fish. I don't know about Mojave. I think it's more smallmouth up there than there is largemouth because they don't have the cover. But here uh, with the Habitat Improvement Program, they got, yeah, you know, look at how chunky that largemouth is. Coming up, coming up, coming up. Well, nice fish, though. Yeah, they're all good ones. Yeah. Look at them. Oh, I love it, Ted. I love it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's what I really love. <laughs> That clear water, you look down at that sucker and, and see him down roughly. I look under my depth finder, about 15, 15 feet. This water's a little darker than up the lake or down the lake, but. And a nice fish. Like I said, for this part of the world where we're at, this is awful, awful good fishing. You know, for this part of the world, I, I, you heard me say it before, I'll say it again. When you're sitting out, sitting out on a on a beautiful, flat, calm, sunny day, it's the middle of February, about 85 degrees, and you're catching brown bass like that. That's the reason Ted and I came back down here. These are the babies that got us intrigued with this fishery, along with one other thing. FLW was here uh, with a bass tournament a number of years ago. And uh, this was my first exposure to the area. And I happened to be fortunate enough to be here when my son Troy fished it. And lo and behold, he won the tournament and he did it with all smallmouth. He didn't weigh a largemouth and he did the thing with all smallmouth. So after I started, one of the fish he had was a five pounder. And there was a lot of big smallmouth caught. That got my attention. I said, I could like this sitting in, you know, 80 degree days catching smallmouth and yeah, you know, January, February, and March, uh, I kind of like that. I talked to my wife and she's, I like that sun. It, I'll do anything to get me out of those 30 below zero days in Minnesota. It was a real easy sell. There. Oh, no, no. Was that dead sticking? No, I pitched it and it was reeling slowly again. But, I, but I'm letting it sink, like I'm letting out line first, Al. Yeah. Like I'm letting it get near the bottom first. Oh, oh. nice one, Ted, nice one. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, yeah, Ted, that's it, that's it, baby. Nobody with that one? Nobody with them. Nice one, that's a get big gal. That's a good one. That's a tournament fish, Ted. That you is put a that one in the live well. Yeah, great tournament fish. Man, that's, a, that's the kind of fish you can expect to catch on a trip, trip down here when you're getting them right. Uh, here, here on Havasu, years ago, they started uh, a habitat restoration program 
and it's really interesting. I'm not going to get into any detail on it right now, but ever since it got in here, the Habitat Improvement Program, they're seeing huge amounts of increases in the size and quantity of smallmouth, along with largemouth red ear and everything else. It's been a really successful program, and uh, not too many years ago, they're starting to implement it up on Lake Mojave too, and that's already a good fishery, but it doesn't have the kind of cover you know, on the structure that you have here. So like it's got a lot of different structure in it. And uh, I don't fish here in summer, it's all winter, so I know what these fish do in December, January, February, and March. So if you're down here at this time, I'll take you from the wintering spots to the transition to where you see pre-spawn and eventually where they're gonna spawn, what to look for if you decide to head to the sunny south. In the deep canyon impoundments of the desert southwest, much of the shoreline is so steep and deep that even a vague hint of sloping structure stands out like a sore thumb, drawing bass from the surrounding area, especially during the spawning cycle. During winter, bass often inhabit depths of 20 to 40 feet, hugging the bases of shoreline points near the mouths of coves. But as spring arrives and the water begins warming, bass shift location moving partway back into the coves. Along the way, they typically intercept small areas with more gradual slopes that act like bass magnets. Smallmouths frequently use main lake areas as well. In these lakes, flatter, more sloping areas always seem to hold some smallmouth bass, especially if they have some cover, like wood or scattered boulders. In effect, think the opposite of steep during pre-spawn for smallmouths. Sloping sand with broken rock is tough to beat. You know, it makes no difference if you're throwing for largemouth bass or smallmouth bass. When you're finesse fishing in these extremely clear, clear water lakes, you have to do it with a spinning rod. We're using uh, uh, quantum uh, rod and reel combinations. We're fishing them with 832 braid, and we're using about a six, seven foot a fluorocarbon leader, Suffolk's fluorocarbon, and we're fishing as light as four, usually four, five, or six pound test line. And it fits any presentation when you gotta finesse fish these fish, which is key for these clear water environments. I tell you what, one thing when we were fishing back home, we used to walleye fish a lot, and we used to use six pound test and catch those walleye. So we're, we're used to using that kind of light lines and things like that. The only difference is when you're fishing for smallmouths, like this, and these things are three to six pounds, they're really powerful, you better have your drag set properly or else you're gonna bust that fish off. You can actually see how loose I have this drag. Just, I'm just gonna give it a little pull here, it just comes out with ease. Uh, when you're setting the hook like that with light line, you, you have to have the drag like that. Even if the drag goes out a little bit, it doesn't hurt nothing. You know, the hooks that we have available to us today, like this VMC hook on this hair jig, very fine wire, ultra sharp. I, I mean, these hooks are something else. And with light line, all you got to do in a lot of cases, you, you just lift no, back I, on the rod. Yeah, you know, and you got, you got hooks a lot different than the old days when you, when you had to really reef to bury a barb, man. Oh, you got one. Got one, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Feels <laughs> like a decent good. fish, yeah, it feels like a decent fish. <laughs> She looks like she wants to come up and play. Or she's gonna come Here's up. Me. Oh yeah. Nice, nice. Nice fish, Al. Yeah. Oh, that's up that, that's the right stuff. That's the kind of stuff we come here to do. That's right. And then every once in a while you catch a mule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those are the money fish though. If we were in a tournament. Oh, those are money. You know, we could play with that. That pretty good on brown fish. Absolutely. The types of finesse lures we're using today are best fish on spinning rods. These baits are fairly small and light, which makes it almost impossible to fish on a bait casting rod. They simply don't work as well. Let's start off with hair. This is hands down one of the best finesse lures around. We're using VMC Marabou jigs and favoring on a lighter side of the weight spectrum, like one eighth of an ounce down to as little as a 1 16th ounce. Every day we tinker with weight. That drop speed can make all the difference in getting 10 bites or not getting any. Then we have a big bite minnow rigged two different ways. One is simply beak hooking a VMC wacky hook for an ultra finesse presentation. 
And the second is on a drop dead minnow hook. We like the favor on a lighter side like a 332nd ounce. Both work well and have similar actions. Another very effective finesse presentation is the VMC jig rigged with a big bite fat grub. A slow and steady retrieve proves to be the most effective. Next, I always have a VMC finesse half moon jig and a big bite tube rig. This is mandatory in spring. A must have in any finesse fishing situation is a drop shot rig. Today we're using a 4 aught VMC spin shot rig with a one foot drop and a big bite shaky squirrel. You always want to remember the three S's when you're finesse fishing in clear pressured water. Small, slow, and subtle. In most cases, keep these in mind when it comes to lure selection and presentation and you'll be right in the game. Oh, there's three, four. You're kidding me. No. I just seen them. They're far, they're deep underneath them. I can see the shadows. They're still there, Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see them. I don't have a heavy enough jig, but this might work. I see seen a flash down there again. Okay, baby. Look at that. I'm just gonna mark this spot and let's lock that sucker down. When you pull those fish off like that, sometimes you gotta you, know, you gotta let them regroup. You know, we'll fish a few more points here and come back on this thing. You know, when you're talking finesse fishing, <clears throat> you dial down everything. That even means the speed you're moving with the trolling motor because you gotta fish these smaller baits and you're forced to fish much, much slower. And in a lot of cases, you know, you know that means almost sitting in place. Now, if you got a Minn Kota that has a spot lock on it, you know, that works really good. You just spot you lock yourself in, a, in an in area and work it after you catch a fish. Or if you got a bigger boat like I have here with a four tracks on it, you know, in many cases I use my talon, you know, and I'll talon down and work the area. Uh, I know a lot more smallmouth tournament fishermen in spring of the year are using that uh, a talon to lock down in an area. They're moving the fish with the trolling motor in this clear water. And pretty soon those fish that you're spooking with the motor, all of a sudden when you lock down, they start coming back to the boat, they're curious. So uh, everything is, is, is uh, uh, part of the finesse system also means the speed and everything you're doing. It isn't only white line and little baits, there's a whole lot to it. And for me to fish slow, sometimes is really painful. <laughs> Got one now? Yeah. She's coming up, up. Oh man, they're, they're kamikaze, man. Look at that. Looks like a nice fish. Yeah. Same as those others. Yeah, I mean, these are, it's a good pot of fish along here, man. Absolutely. They're in a jumping mode today, ain't they? They are, they sure are jumping. Everyone jumps today. You drill them and, and man, you see that line come flying out of the water. Nice chunk up. Nice chunk up. Three more of those, Al, we're in the money. <laughs> yeah. We're in the money, baby. Nobody home? Nobody home. That's one of them tournament winning fish, baby. Coming up again, look at her. Oh man, what a tank. Oh. Oh. Look at that. Now, now you're borderlining on a Great Lakes fish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you're borderlining on a Great Lakes one, man. Wow. Whew. What a pig, man. Ugh. I see when you came back on that rod, it's, that ain't no dinky. <laughs> no. I seen that line come flying up. Whew. Wow. Well, what do That's you think of this giant. one? A giant fish anywhere you go in the country. Hey, I gotta tell you a story. A few days ago, a friend of mine gave me a call and he says, Al, I gotta take you to my secret lake. Now he's been telling me about this lake for about six weeks. The weather was right, conditions were right. And I says, okay, let's go. And uh, uh, we drove up about an hour out of my, my hometown of Brainerd, Minnesota. And make a long story short, 
We fished about three and a half hours. You guessed it, one two pound bass. Secret Lake wasn't producing really, really good. Although I, gotta, I will go back this fall after the lake turns over and I will catch some spinnerbait, swim jig and jig fish. The lake I could see has potential for big fish. But we're driving back and we're just talking about a lot of different things and I, was ta I shared with him, you know, fishing is a lot like life. Let me explain. When I was a guide, and I guided for many years, I kept out these elaborate records on salooner movements, seasonal mo movements, uh, you, you name it, time of day, weather, wind directions. I did all of these elaborate charts, and when it was all said and done, what it shook out to be is, is if I go on the water seven days in a row, I have two good days, I have three average days, and I have two bad days. And this has held true for 40 something years. And it's just like life. Look at your average week. You go to work and on a Monday and uh, uh, you might have two good days that week. Things are going really good. Business is good, family is good. You get great costs. Three days, case sera, sera, nothing happened. And then you hit those two days, done. Come out of left field, you get hit with a financial deal, a sickness, an illness or something. Fishing and life got a lot in common. You don't think so? Think about it this week. Look at your seven day week. Look at the last seven days you were out on water and see if I'm not right. I challenge you to do that. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. And by the way, I want to close with one scripture. It's John 1633. In a world, you will have tribulation, but be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. It means life isn't going to be a bowl of cherries all the time. See ya. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.